back with another video. Uh, thank you if you're watching this one. And also, if you watched the last one, we'll reconfigure two-factor authentication. For this video, we're going to be using some encryption and steganography. Uh, there's going to be a few outcomes that we're looking for uh, to achieve uh, to configure BitLocker and portable media, implementing full disk encryption using BitLocker, managing security for removable media, and hiding documents in a graphic file. So let's go ahead and get started with the first exercise. So for our first exercise, we're going to configure the BitLocker and portable media. And what BitLocker is, this is storage encryption technology that gives administrators the ability to secure fixed and removable disk, including like uh, things like portable USB drives using encryption services built into the OS. So what, we, what we're gonna do first is enable the BitLocker without TPM support, support onto a drive and then testing the configuration to confirm it is working. So we're going to first uh, take a look at the group policy and we're gonna edit it, at least a portion of it. Okay, open this up here. Okay. We're going to enable this, which is to require an additional authentication at startup. And we're also going to leave allow BitLocker without a compatible TPM to uh, to make sure we're on the right track for what we're accomplishing. All right, so now that that's taken care of, we can actually close these things out here. We're gonna open this up here, All right? And then we should be able to turn on the BitLocker for our E drive. We're definitely gonna use a password. Okay. And save to a file. Should open up here for us. Okay. All right, should be able to see it down here. I'm gonna refresh. There it is. All right, we're gonna save it in here. Should didn't take long to encrypt. So now that we see that uh, it's a big semi grayed out as far as the unlock um, lock icon that's on USB E, uh, indicating that the bit locker has not completed, unfortunately, the encryption of the fixed drive, but we'll, we'll take care of that. But first, let's actually go inside here. We're going to create a folder for marketing. going to create a text document for this up. Um, let's see. Okay, let's we'll save it. All right, perfect. Now we're going to just restart it. So there we go. So we have the login screen ready to go here. I'm going to log in as someone else other than the administrator. All right. Now that we've logged in, we're going to finish the install. I want to agree here. All right, perfect. So let's actually open this up. And we should have, yep. We have the local disk E uh, in the lock state. We actually, let's open it here. Right. Perfect. Now, not only am I going to go inside, I'm going to take a look at the marketing folder. All right, let's see. 
perfect. So that means Elizabeth Scott, the uh, user that I've logged in, she now has access to the encrypted volume E drive. So I'm actually going to sign out of her now. All right, so now what we're going to do is implement a full disk encryption using BitLocker. Um, to, to unlock the un unencrypted disk, right? Uh, well, first, the disk encryption can be enabled using a local domain group policy now to unlock it. Uh, the disk value, the user must type the password to even unlock it. So in the event the user forgets the password for unlocking the encrypted value, the recovery key generated by BitLocker can be used to gain access to the encrypted drive. So first, what we're going to do to demonstrate this is to configure BitLocker settings via the group policy object. So let's actually open this and take a look at some group policy management. And then we're actually going to open this up here. And then we're going to create a GPO, right? Not how you spell desktops. All right, perfect. So we're going to we're going to actually take a look at somewhere else here. Let me actually go here to what we just created. We're going to take a look at the authenticated users group uh, for the security filtering. What's it loads here for us? All right, so we're actually going to remove the authenticated users. And naturally, of course, we're going to add some security filtering for our settings in this GPO. Once it finishes removing. All right, perfect. Take a look here. At our object types. And we want to make sure to, that we're including the computers, which is why we're going in here to begin with. And then here, what you want to do is you have the lab, the other server rather within the lab network. Naturally, we want to check names, make sure it's underlined so we're good to go. All right, so now that's it's an it's a member. It's, the computer account is a member of the practicelab.com domain, so we're good here. All right, so it should be there. It is. Let's wait for it to populate. Uh, the practice labs win 801 is now added in the security filtering section. This means that the, uh, the bit locker for desktop group policy will apply only to uh, Windows 801 computer. So now we're actually going to take a look here again, and we're going to do some editing. All right, so let's actually expand this administrative Windows. All right, actually, here. <clears throat> Perfect. And of course, we want this enabled. And we want this to, let's see, configure without a compatible. All right. Perfect. We want this one to not be allowed for the TPM. All right, so we're going to hit OK here. All right, so now we can see that the state of it is now enabled. All right, so actually I can close this out. All right, so we can actually keep this out too. All right, so now what we're going to do is actually shrink the existing drive. Now, to be able to save the recovery key, we actually need to partition the existing drive and create a separate partition. This computer has only one drive, of course, and BitLocker does not allow the recovery key to be saved to the encrypted drive. So I'm actually going to uh, partition. All right, so let's actually swivel over to 801. All right, let's manage this here. Let's provide some disk management. All right, we're going to shrink the volume. Just going to leave it at default for it to shrink. And we see, we're going to see a new partition is going to be created. There it is. 
All right, so actually we're going to create some new simple volume too. All right. All right, perfect. Now this is good. Actually, it's fine. Uh, D is fine. All right, and the format partition, everything looks good. And we're going to hit finish here. All right, it's formatting currently. All right, perfect. So the D partition is just about ready to use to be used once it's there. It is perfect. All right, so we're good to go here as far as the new volume that's been created. Now we're going to enable BitLocker. Now to encrypt the selected disk volume using BitLocker, we must have administrative privileges on our computer. So to enable this, we're going to do a few things. So we're going to ensure the BitLocker for desktops uh, policy is applied. So we're going to open up the command prompt so we can make sure that it uh the update is is enforced uh, all right perfect so we can actually close this out and then let's restore this here let's see this all right, so we see the new volume. Let's actually turn on the bit locker here. All right, we're gonna of course use the password. Okay, of course, save to a file. Save it here. Be why it's moving so slow. Yes. Next, and we want to start encrypting. So we're going to see similar to what we saw before, right? There's a gray lock icon, uh, meaning that the drive is still in, in its unlock state as indicated by the gray icon. So actually, we're going to take a look at the volume again. We're going to do some bit locker options. At least encryption options. We're gonna take a look. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm not we're actually gonna do something else with that. All right. So now we're just gonna verify the BitLocker functionality. Uh, but to do this first, let's actually um, because the because what we just done enabled the drive E for BitLocker. So we're gonna find out how it works and to test the unlock drive password. So we're gonna do a few things here. Let's see. Perfect. So now that we have Win801 uh, back up and running, we're going to open up the File Explorer here. And we see that the local disk is now locked, the D lock. All right, so now let's, of course, let's open it up. And let's put in the password. OK. Perfect. All right, now we see that it's unlocked. So we're going to move on to our next task, which is managing the bit locker using the command prompt. So we're actually going to pull it up here. Actually, let me do this way. Right, yes, of course. So perfect. And if we can see the protection status is on, right? You can see that it's on as far as drive D. And so now we're gonna move on to unlocking the encrypted drive user recovery key. So the password, uh, when the password is used to unlock a bit locker, enable, uh, enable drive when it's forgotten. As I mentioned before, we can use the recovery key that was created earlier to unlock the drive. So we're going to not enter a password to simulate recovery of an encrypted volume using the recovery keys. So let's actually let's do this again. Restart. 
All right. Perfect. So we have the backup of running again. We had to restart it uh, to be able to lock the encrypted drive since we already unlocked it using the password. So let's reopen the file explorer. We're actually going to, once you already expand it, right, so let's take a look at the documents here. All right. So now it's recovery. <laughs> it's displaying the included BitLocker recovery file. So we're actually going to take a look here. And I'm actually going to... Let's see, I'm gonna copy this. Hopefully it'll work for me. All right. And and I'll just leave it, leave it there. So now I'm just gonna actually I'm gonna keep it minimized because I may need it depending on how the lets me pace. So now we're gonna try to unlock the drive for the disk. Nine, of course it is. Okay, more options, recovery key. This perfect. So it's officially unlocked. <laughs> All right, and it's of course it's empty. Uh, but nonetheless, we successfully unlocked it with the recovery key, just in case the password is forgotten to unlock the bit locker. All right, so I'm actually going to keep the file, um, uh, the file explorer open. So I'm just going to remove the bit locker disk encryption on drive D here. All right. So let's actually open up the command prompt here. All right. So let's do this here. Decryption of power process. Now it may sometimes take a few minutes uh, to finish. Uh, but so far for when I've done it more than a few times, it's usually pretty quick, but in general, it could take a, take a few minutes. Let's take, take a look at the status. All right, perfect. So the protection is off, encryption method none, fully decrypted. So we're actually good to go, All right? So now the values D and C are actually um, de fully decrypted. Let's actually clear out the screen. How do we see that? Shut it down. All right. All right. So now what we're going to do is manage some security for removable media. Now, for security reasons, most organizations will prohibit their users from using personal storage devices for transporting proprietary information. This is typically to avoid theft of confidential data that may put the company's trade secrets at risk. What I'm going to do now is configure some basic security for portable storage media to disallow their uses by configuring group policy objects or what's typically called the GPO. So we're actually gonna swivel back over to DC01 and take a look at our group policy management. And with our group policy management, we're gonna create a GPO in this domain. And we're also gonna link it as well. As soon as it loads here for us. All right, perfect. Let's actually go here. Create it, and we want to name it, of course, removable media. All right. All right, perfect. So now that we have it here, we're gonna make some edits. Let's me. There we go. So put this up here. All right. Let's take a look at our policies, administrative templates, of course. Our system. Let's just click here. Yeah, we want to take a look at our removable storage access. All right. Actually, you know what? Let's let me go back here. <clears throat> Actually, you know what this. Thought it was outside of it. We want to take a look at this one here. All right, naturally, of course, we're going to enable this and I'm click OK. Perfect. All right, so now we can actually close this out. Now, due to unfortunately system limitations of this lab, it's not going to show the actual policy of block your removable storage on the devices, uh, which is understood, right? So now what we're going to do is hide documents in a graphics file. Now, stenography means covered or hidden. 
right? So it's mainly intended to hide a secret message in, pl in a plain message uh, or a graphics file. So we're going to hide documents in a graphics file. Now, we're going to first use folder stenography. Uh, I'm sorry, steganography tools. Steganography is just a method, uh, as I mentioned, of hiding a message in a different form, right? So it's extremely difficult to detect because of this reason to detect steganography. And I'm going to show an example of hiding the contents of a folder in a graphics file. Now, there are various tools you could use. One of them is Gargoyle Investor uh, Forensic Pro. However, we're going to perform the task with the help of a simple compression program like WinZip, Renoir, or 7-Zip. I believe we're going to use 7-Zip because uh, we have a tool built in here uh, for us to, uh, for folder steganography. So let's actually swivel back over to 801. And we're actually going to head to Windows, well, Internet Explorer. All right, so let's take a look at our tools. 7-Zip, yep. Like I thought, I'm gonna run it. All right, so now we got it set up here, ready to go. All of that now for the install should be fairly quick for the install. Okay, of course, we do. Finish. Perfect. So now we can open up the file explorer. We can go to the root of a local disk. Actually, click Home tab. And open up. Open us up a new folder. Practice lab. Perfect. So so far so good. So let's do this here. We're going to create two text files here. Should have copied it so I could paste it. But that's fine. All right. Gonna uh, this here. Perfecto. All right. So after we created the two text files, right, we just added it to a zip file uh, for a seven zip um, for us to have those two together. So the that folder was created. So now I'm going to need a graphics file. So I have to copy from online. And for the sake of the lab, uh, I believe a graphics file should should already be on the, the, the device and server I'm using. But uh, I think I'm going to download my own uh, for my of my choice uh, for the demonstration for the steganography uh, example here. So just a moment. So I have my photo. <laughs> so let's open up the command prompt. And let's do a bit of configuring here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I was able to get the file copied as I just had the the command uh, switch, like I had it confused, maybe it this little bit of dyslexia there, I'm not sure. But I finally had the file copied by way of the command prompt. Uh, so I'm actually going to exit out of here. But we can see a new graphic is now created uh, the file size is the same as the the original, right? Well, it doesn't for some reason it doesn't say the size of the first one, but they're about the same size. I'm actually going to open this one up here, and then we're going to open this one up here. Well, actually. There it is. 
All right, perfect. So it's essentially the same photo. I'm not sure why it has an issue with that particular with that particular um <laughs> with that particular application, but it does still have let me go back to the desktop here. Actually look it up for some reason it's I can correct it, but nonetheless, they're they're both they're they they both are graphic files that display the exact same content, but no one would ever come to know that uh, that the original file has actually hidden content behind it. So I'm actually going to go back to the seven zip here. Let's take a look. And... Okay. Maximize that. Right, so let's go to Steve. All right, perfect. So let's actually click on it. Okay. So we see both text files are displayed, which means that it has the content that I was just aforementioned. Uh, that it has hidden in the photo. So, uh, but that brings us to the end of our video. We've completed encryption and steganography. That was so much fun. Uh, we've done a few things. Just for a brief recap, we configured BitLocker on portable media. We implemented full disk encryption using BitLocker. We managed security for removable media, and we hit documents in a graphic file as well. This was definitely fun. This is also the last video for the first half of this series. The next video that will be posted after this will be the very first video for part two. Again, this is fun. Hope to see you on the next one. Stay curious, stay secure.